All right, now for the by far the most difficult part of the windshield uh, here in part two, we're going to go ahead and create that uh, little uh, inlet that allows uh, you know the physical model to fit inside of the Automoblox vehicle. So to do that, we have to uh, do a couple of new features in Autodesk. So first thing I do is we're, here's this is the uh, shelled part so far that we have from part one of the video. What we're going to do now is we have to create a work plane. And the work plane basically is an imaginary surface that allows us to sketch a feature and then add it to a part. Uh, and it would be a it could be it could be parallel to any of the other features in the part, or it could be something that is, um, or it could be something that is uh, just parallel or tangent to a surface. There's lots of different things you can use a work plane for. So in this case, we're going to create a work plane, but we're going to create what's called an offset work plane. And what that means is we're going to be creating a plane that's actually parallel to the bottom of this part. So to do that, I go to the underside, and I'm going to select the underside, and I'm going to offset that work plane by the thickness of the, uh, of the part. So I look at my page three drawing, and I see that the bottom of the windshield and the bottom of this insert are going to be 0.67 inches apart. So I'm going to type in 0.67, and that's going to move that work plane down so that it's actually underneath the part. So see that yellow surface there indicates a work plane? Well, see it's 0.67 inches away. So to do that now, now, now what that allows me to do is I can create a sketch on this work plane. I can understand that's why it's kind of called a work plane. You can do work on it. So I'm going to create a sketch, select the work plane, and now it's going to go ahead and make that work plane part of the sketch. Uh, sorry, sketch on that work plane. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I have to, um, the next thing I have to do is reproduce the underside of it. And I have to, to kind of help me out here, I'm going to project the geometry of the existing windshield onto this work plane, which is really pretty straightforward. If I just go to project geometry, I can actually click around the edges here, and then it will add those edges to the sketch plane. Strictly, mo for this case, it's strictly just for dimensioning purposes. Uh, the reason I'm using the outside, you can project the inside too, but I only really need the outside because the dimensions that are on the drawing are all to the outside edges of the uh, of the windshield base. So I'm just going to project the geometry from the outside edges. So now that projected geometry will show up as a yellow line on your sketch, and now we can go ahead and start sketching the uh, feature inside. So again, we're going to kind of sketch the outside edges here, and what I'm going to do, this is a little different. Um, you can do a rectangle, which is what I'm going to do. And you don't have to locate it, but just again, pay attention to the automatic constraints that it tries to create. You see how that, I wouldn't want to do that because now it's going to constrain it to the center of the left side. So I'm going to make it so it's roughly just about there. And we can size and trim and take care of all of those other details in just a second. So now i got this rectangle. The other thing you want to pay attention to is you'll notice that there are six notches. And those notches are, um, uh, are located around the perimeter of the part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create those notches using my line tool. Now I don't have to do it in exactly the correct space because we can dimension the location of these notches in a little bit. But I just kind of want to get the geometry of the part in before I go ahead and uh, before I go ahead and put them in. Okay, so. And they, they are vertically aligned, so I can keep those if they if those if it automatically generates those vertical constraints, you can keep them in if you want. And the horizontal constraints as well, you can keep those in if you want. It'll just adjust quickly. All right, so I've got that. Now one other thing I'm going to do here, and this is just for cosmetic purposes, I'm going to trim. This will actually save me a little bit of time when I do the extrusion. So the trim tool is on the modify panel. We go to the scissors, and what it allows me to do is it allows me to take out extra geometry within. So I'm kind of getting a part that looks kind of like that uh, when I do the trim. And now what I can do is go ahead and dimension all of the things uh, that I need to dimension. So here we go. I'm going to do a point to point dimension. In this case because I've trimmed the geometry I have to do point to points. So this particular length, oops, I should uh, not do a point to point here on that. Let me go ahead and try that again. It, I'm going to go by the drawings dimensions and we'll kind of go left to right uh, based on the drawings dimensions so you can kind of follow along there. So I'm going to start with the outside edge of the geometry which is why I projected it in the first place. And I'm going to go ahead and go to this side here. This is going to be, says, well, it says uh, on the drawing 0.68. And I do that and move the whole thing 0.68 away. That's a start. Oh, there's one more thing i got to do. if I'm Because it dimensions the center lines, I have to add some center points. So that's actually pretty easy to do. 
Uh, to do that, I'm going to go to the, uh, again, the, where is it? I fur, where is it, where is it, where is it? Center point. Okay, go to point. And uh, the default point here is the center point, right? So I can tell I've got the center part of the feature when I get the green point there. And I'm going to go ahead and add center points to each of the spots here. And again, the reason I do that is because I'm actually dimensioning to those center lines uh, based on the drawing. So why, you know, why reinvent or have to do my own math when I can just kind of dimension to the center points as the drawings dictate. So let's go ahead and continue to do that. So I take this point here, and I'm going to dimension to the geometry here, and that's going to be 0.95. And notice that it's changing the size. Don't worry about that. We can fix that later. And then we're going to go ahead and dimension again from the same spot. And we're going to go 1.94 here. That's okay. I know it's starting to look like, hey, wait a minute, what happened? Okay, we can fix that. And just a matter of fact, you know what? We're going to fix that right now. Um, I undid that last dimension. I'm going to try to uh, get these thicknesses proper here. So notice that in um, in the drawing, it has a detail section on on A, and it wants us to it, it wants us to make these particular uh, outcroppings, we'll call them, to be a certain thickness and a and a certain distance away. So to do that, I'm going to zoom in on one of them. In this case, I'm going to zoom in on this one here. I'm going to make a couple of dimensions based on the detail drawing, which in this case are point, we want to make this point 04. And then it wants us to make this to be 0.05. Okay, that's a lot better. And then I'm going to have to repeat those same dimensions on each part here to here. And I'm going to kind of work my way around and do these dimensions just to kind of get the those particular features all set before I uh, before I play with them too much. So I noticed that in this case I had to do it here as well. Point oh four. Okay. Let's just double check that those are all working out just fine. Okay, they are. Now let's just go ahead and change the length of this. This is point oh five. Oops. Okay, and again, I can locate those centers a little later, so no worries there. I'm going to make that 0.04, same deal here, 0.04, and then this is going to be 0.05. Okay, and then a couple more to go. One more, right here, here to here, 0.04, and then got to zoom in a little bit here to make that 0.04 as well, and then this line here, 0.05. All right, so that's that. Okay, should be all right now on that. Now let's go ahead and try to recreate those dimensions one more time. Make that 1.94. Okay, and then I'm gonna make from here to here 2.22. All right, and then that should that should help me locate that vertical spot. And then I'm gonna go to the left side here, and we're gonna locate it on the horizontal dimensions as well. So here we go here, 0.29. And again, I'm just kind of getting these off of the drawing. Okay, what did I do wrong there? Uh, let's see here. Let's make these horizontally constrained uh, to each other. 